somebody has so many accolades, you know, to highlight, I don't know where you start. Um, this person, from what I've heard and, and been described by many people, you know, is was the Paul Rabel of his generation. And uh, if you read his uh, the, the insert in the uh, program, uh, you'll see that uh, among the many many accolades he had, he was a uh, a four-time first-team All-American in college, and uh, one of very few people to actually do that. You know, above and beyond that, he's now giving back in a, in a coaching capacity, just like many of you all. And um, you know, again, you can talk about the accolades, but it's neat to see the impact that he's having on his players, and to see many of the players that have come through his program uh, at Garnet Valley, and to see where they are, the fine young men they're turning out to be, and uh, the people that they become is a testimony to all the work he's done. So on behalf of SLA Cross, I'd like to introduce Frank Urso, our speaker for this morning. Thank you. Um, Ryan called me the other day and asked me if I would uh, take the opportunity to come in and, and, and speak, and, and I, was, uh, I was more than delighted. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey, both uh, lacrosse and life and, and relationship with the Lord. And um, start young. You know, I, uh, I had an unbelievable childhood. Um, I, and I think that uh, you don't really realize that until later on in life. But I had, I had an absolutely wonderful childhood. It was, it was all about sports. I absolutely love sports. Um, I grew up, uh, I, I uh, grew up on Long Island. Uh, Brentwood, Long Island. I played. Uh, I played football there. I played football there for for nine years. Three years in the youth league. Three years at the uh, middle school, and three years at high school. Nine years of football, um, and never played on a team that lost a game. Um, nine straight undefeated seasons. A tie in my senior year, and it was kind of depressing. But uh, <laughs> eight a tie. But uh, yeah, nine years of. Um, Nine years of, of without a loss. And, uh, and, and I, the high school I went to, Brentwood High School, was the sixth largest high school in the United States. Graduating high school class of 2,400. Um, so we had a lot of athletes to choose from. It was a uh, mini college, so to speak. And in fact, the year I left, after I left, they had to divide the school into two schools um, just, to, uh, just to obviously separate those classes. So. Um, I started playing lacrosse. Um, I had a friend introduce lacrosse to me when I was in the eighth grade. So I started rather late, but uh, I fell in love with the sport immediately. Um, I had great success in high school, um, was able to play in, uh, in the Long Island Championship game and actually played against Coach Donowski at the time. Um, and uh, had a great high school career in sports. Um, my parents uh, was blessed to have unbelievable parents. Came to every single game, every event that I've ever was involved in. And for me, um, then and now, it's always been about sports and family. And, uh, and, and that's what my life has been. Uh, Mom and Dad came to absolutely everything. <clears throat> I, was, uh, I was blessed and, and uh, got a full scholarship to the University of Maryland to play both football and lacrosse. Um, Late that summer prior to going to Maryland, I made a decision that I was not going to play football. And I called Coach Beardmore up and said, you know, I've changed my mind. I just want to play lacrosse. And he said, no problem. He said, uh, we still want you here, so come on out. Um, so my, uh, my journey at Maryland, my journey at Maryland began. Um, as a freshman, uh, we, uh, we won the national championship. And, uh, we had a, a great season. We had an unbelievable team. Um, I would stand up and say I think it was, if not the, one of the greatest college teams to ever ever play together. Um, we had 13 All-Americans named that year on that team. And it was an unbelievable experience for me. I had um, um, a great year and was fortunate enough to score the winning goal in the national championship game and was named uh, first team All-American. Um, being a family man, you know, my, my dad was uh, my dad was unbelievably happy. Obviously, he was a proud father, and uh, and um, life for me became exciting. I uh, there was there were I, I look back on my on my young age, and there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing negative. Uh, the the my uh, 
My trip through Maryland was unbelievable. Four years, four years. We made it to the national championship all four, all four years. Um, we won in my freshman year. We won in my junior year. Um, lost sophomore year and lost in my, in my senior year. Um, lost to Coach Moran sitting back there. Um, in my uh, in my senior year and um, so for me, um, <clears throat> lacrosse was unbelievable for me. I, I absolutely I loved the game. Um, I loved everything about it. I loved playing it. Um, after after school, I I I, I was uh, able to play. Excuse me. For, uh, I played with the United States lacrosse team back in 74. I was the youngest player on the team. I got to travel to uh, Melbourne, Australia to play for the national team. I mean for the world championship and we actually did a world tour at the time at the same time. And it was, I mean, the experiences that lacrosse had, uh, had brought me were just, were unbelievable. I played with the U.S. team that first traveled to uh, Canada um, when, uh, when box lacrosse was attempted to be introduced to the United States. So a gentleman by the name of Chris Fritz put a team together to travel to Canada to hopefully bring box lacrosse to the United States. Um, we traveled all through Canada, played the game, and then the game was brought back into the United States in the early 70s. Um, that was my dream. There it was. I'm going to come out of college, and I'm going to go play professional lacrosse, and that was it. And, uh, and I would tell you for the next couple of years, that was absolutely all that was on my mind about playing, playing the game. Um, I just wanted to continue to play and play and play, and that was going to be my life. So those young dreams. Um, after my senior year, um, I was working with uh, I was working with a gentleman as far as signing a contract and to go into this to, into this league. And I remember one Sunday morning, I got a phone call, and it was from the newspaper. It was kind of odd; it was on a Sunday, but I got a phone call from the newspaper, and they wanted to get my uh, my take on um, the league folding. Now this is, and this was the first time I heard of the league folding, um, and I was absolutely, I was in shock. Um, I was in shock, and you know, quite honestly, I was upset, and I was disappointed, and I was a whole lot of things. The conversation probably took about two minutes. I heard the news. I hung up the phone, um, and I said to myself, "Oh my gosh, what, what's next?" Um, I really didn't plan much for my, for my life. Um, other than other than to play the game, to be quite honest with you, and you know, growing up and everything going so well for me, um, I didn't have much need. And uh, um, when you speak to um, when you look at FCA and you speak to the Lord, well, at that time I really didn't have much need for the Lord in my life. Everything was great. I was doing everything. I was doing everything myself. I was accomplishing a whole lot of stuff. I had I had a great career. Um, I, uh, I had parents who, who I, through college, went to every single game that I've ever played. And, and that was a lot of traveling from Long Island, and everything by car. And, um, Dad was there for everything. I got inducted into the Hall of Fame, and Dad was there to present me and put me in, into the Hall of Fame. And I got inducted into the University of Maryland Hall of Fame, and uh, he was there for that. And Long Island Lacrosse Hall of Fame, and uh, the New York Sports Hall of Fame. And so there was a lot of great events in, in my life. I share that with you, um, not to brag about the honors and the awards. Um, I share it with you because um, what I didn't understand and what I didn't have in my life at that time was the Lord. Um, and I think that um, over the next 15 years, I think the Lord um, Took his time, extremely patient, and uh, and wanted to get my attention. So, um, the lacrosse league folded. What did I do? I I, I went out and worked. I uh, I said, okay, it's time to get a job, and I worked for several years, and and then uh, and then I got married, and then I had two children, and I, and uh, it was uh, it was a uh, Tuesday afternoon. Um, and this day I would have my first true relationship or encounter with the Lord. Uh, it was a Tuesday afternoon. I had a, I had a wife and two daughters, uh, three years old, six years old. And I was at work and I, uh, I received a phone call. And a gentleman on the other end of the phone said to me, um, are you Frank Urson? I said, yeah, I am. And he said, uh, he said, well, you don't know who I am. He said, but uh, 
I got your phone number from your wife. And uh, I just need to let you know, and I get emotional talking about this stuff, but uh, they were just in a car accident. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, I uh, dropped what I was doing. I asked him where. He, he gave me uh, where it was. It was about 30 minutes away, and I don't know if any of you have ever been to the D.C., Maryland area and driven the Beltway during rush hour. Um, it has, I mean, Long Island Expressway has nothing over the Beltway during rush hour. And uh, I dropped what I was doing, and I got in my car, and I drove on the shoulder of the road 30 miles on the Beltway to get to a place where an um, accident was supposed to have taken place. Well, I got there, there was nothing. And it took me a good period of time, over an hour, to get there, but there was absolutely nothing. And um, so I looked up, and there was a sign, one of those hospital signs, and I, uh, I followed it immediately. It was, it was a mile away. I pulled into the emergency area, I ran into the emergency uh, wing there, and there was a desk on my left, and I was approaching the desk, and I looked over to the right, and there was a double doors, and it, it said, you know, emergency only, blah, blah, blah. And I looked up, and I said, they're there. And I, I made a right-hand turn, and uh, had people screaming at me, you can't go in there. And I ran through that door, and uh, I had uh, my uh, youngest sitting here, um, screaming and crying, of course, my wife uh, over here, head bleeding, and my other daughter over here. And I was like, you know, where do you go from here? Um, so I, I quickly grabbed this one, and, and the doctor said she was okay, just really scared. My wife was bleeding. She had hit the windshield, had head injuries. Um, he said, but you need to, you know, attend to your daughter. So I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, go over to attend to my daughter, and they said, uh, you know, she has problems. She has uh, internal problems, and we need to quickly uh, get her to Children's Hospital. Well, that's all the way back in D.C., and I'm over, we're over in Maryland right now, and it's another 40-minute ride, and I said, okay. I said, uh, I said, great. I said, okay, do we have, I said, I'm going with you in the helicopter. And uh, they said, no, you can't. You, you're not allowed in the helicopter. You, you're going to have to, you're going to have to drive. And uh, I won't share the words that I expressed at that time. Um, but uh, so I got in the car and uh, and I uh, and I drove to uh, I drove to Children's Hospital. Um, my first real relationship with the Lord, and it really wasn't a good one. Um, I was uh, I was one who um, you know all the whys and how could you do this to me came out. How, how can this possibly happen? And, uh, um, and I battled back and forth uh, with the Lord this entire trip. And I can almost, I mean, just envision that whole ride right now. It just, it was, um, it was back and forth. It was, I, I couldn't understand what the Lord would, had, had done and why he would do this. And, you know, why would a, a good God do this to, uh, you know, a child? And, uh, um, and then, you know, the, the, why did you do this to me turned into the, um, Please, Lord, help me. You know, don't uh, don't let anything happen. I got to Children's Hospital. I ran uh, I ran into the emergency room, and there was a doctor waiting for me. And uh, that doctor um, looked at me and um, very oddly said, uh, "What took you so long?" <laughs> um, and I, I'm not going to tell you what I said then either. Um, so what took me so long? You know, so I had to drive. They took a helicopter. Um, he said, but he said the reason, you know, he was, he said she has to have the surgery immediately. She has internal bleeding. Um, we have to get inside. We don't know what's wrong. And, uh, you know, and I said, okay, I'll sign off immediately. You know, what choice do I have? I says, but I'm going, uh, I will be in that operating room with you. Um, and he says, I have no time to argue with you. Okay. And uh, so I went in and uh, I would tell you, uh, not just that surgery. Um, it was three and a half months of, of surgery. She had a... Uh, the seatbelt of the car had torn open um, her stomach from the inside. And so after the first surgery, there were, there were complications. Um, but over the next 15 years, there were, there were just, there were uh, events that have taken place, and I, I won't share all of them with you, but um, you know, one including um, that, that marriage ended up to, uh, to go sour really, really fast. I had a, uh, my, my wife had a drinking problem that uh, we struggled with to get fixed for her, and uh, it ended up uh, us separating, getting a divorce. Um, and I moved here to Pennsylvania. Um, myself and my two daughters, um, I had custody of them. I moved here to Pennsylvania, and I was starting, starting a whole new life. And um, 
And uh, so at that time, um, I, met a, I met a young lady. I, uh, and this was several years later, I met, met a young lady, and, and uh, a beautiful young lady, 10 years younger than I was, and um, was in love with me. Uh, we fell in love, and uh, it was, you know, this was the first time I got to thank God. I was like, wow, good job, Lord. Um, you know, I, I have, I have, a, I have a, somebody who wants me, you know, a single man with two young daughters, um, and uh, it was great. And But I didn't realize uh, why the Lord brought her into my life. But later on, I found out kind of why. Um, you know, I, 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 all this time I had no need for the Lord, and I think that uh, the Lord started to try to get my attention that you, you do need me. Um, and um, so uh, it was a year later that um, my wife had gotten pregnant, and uh, we were about to have our first child, and uh, found out it was a boy, and it was, uh, it was exciting for me that I was going to now have a son. Um, July 29th, we ran to the hospital because uh, she went into labor. And uh, so we were sitting in the hospital room and um, um, she was uh, just, we were both just sitting there and talking and they were going to, they went to give her an epidural. And, um, as you know, that they have those little beepers of the heartbeat of the baby that you got to see and all that good stuff. Well, that thing stopped. Uh, needless to say, um, wow, it was a major event. Um, this thing just, it just, it was just slightly moving. Um, she, the, uh, she screamed, the nurse screamed, um, doctors came flying in, and, uh, you know, my, they just, I mean, the bed, they just flew out of there quickly. They just, they pulled her out of there as fast as they possibly could. And uh, that was my, uh, my second um, encounter, so to speak, with the Lord. Um, whereas uh, uh, it was not a good one again. Um, it was me challenging the Lord again on why he would do what he's doing. I mean, was, um, he knew there was two loves for me, you know, lacrosse and my family. And from a family perspective, everything seemed to, you know, just, just not go well. Um, and so uh, it, was, it was an absolute obvious delight when the doctor came out and said, uh, my son is born. It's fine, and so is your wife. And uh, it was an unbelievably, it was an unbelievable moment for, for me and for my wife, but it was truly at that time that my wife turned to me and said, um, you know, we need to find a church and we need to know the Lord. Um, because, you know, he just saved, <clears throat> he saved our son. Um, it was a, eight months later, um, we had found a church um, that we absolutely loved. It was eight months later that um, you know I got up uh, in, in front of a full house of uh, 1,500 at our church um, and accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and, uh, um, and knew He'd been doing a lot of work uh, in me for all the, for all those years. Um, and uh, so, so uh, my relationship with the Lord started at, at that point in time. And it was, it was, and I'm going to skip you know, further ahead, it was about 10 years later. You know, the only thing I still didn't have in my life was lacrosse. You know, my, my love for the game and, and everything else. And I had been away from it for, for a good 20 years. And uh, I received a, a phone call, and my son was 10 now, and I received a phone call uh, from a gentleman who said, you know, hey, um, he says, uh, you don't know me, he says, I run the... The youth league here and the lacrosse program here, and he said, uh, would it, um, "He said, would you be interested in coaching?" And I said, "Oh my gosh!" I said, "I haven't been involved in the sport for 20 years," and uh, I says, I, "I, you know, and I was delighted that that he called, and you know, and I looked up and I, I knew it was the Lord um, making that making that call happen." And I said, uh, "You know, let me talk to my son, but I'd be uh, I'd be more than happy. Um, I'd be more than happy to do that." Um, so I started, uh, I, I started, I started coaching, and 
And uh, but, but the Lord's work kind of wasn't done for us as, as we were as we were changing and he was now starting to bring things back into my life and, and things were starting to move really forward for me. My, my wife comes to me one day and she said, uh, we need to pray on something. And I said, well, what's that? And she said, um, um, I think the Lord wants us to adopt. And I said, really? <laughs> he hasn't shared that with me yet. Uh, what? Why don't we wait till he tells me and then we both can talk about this. And uh, she says, no. She says, I want you to pray on it. And she said, uh, you know, and I said, okay. And, you know, and I, I, I think I kind of dismissed it and said, you know, I'm, I'm oh my gosh. I said, uh, you know, getting, I'm getting up there in life and I'm close to 50 and I'm not so sure adopting is exactly what I'm interested in doing. So it was a couple of months later, and she came back, and she said, um, she said uh, again, um, you know, this is really on my heart. I think we, I really think we need to adopt. And I, I you know, and I, I try to dis, I try to dismiss it again. Well, two weeks, two weeks later, she called me up, and uh, almost in a panic, and I said, what, what's going on? And she said, something happened to me today, and she says, I, I need to share it with you as soon as you get home. Get home as quick as you can. So, okay. And she said, um, she said, I, I haven't shared this with you yet, but um, she said, uh, I believe um, the Lord wanted us to adopt. And she says, and I haven't shared this. She says, um, I had a dream the other night that the Lord wanted us to adopt an African-American child. I said, really? Um, she said, I got in my car today. She said, I looked in, I went to start the car and I looked in the rear view mirror and there was an African-American child sitting in our back seat. She said, I spun my head around immediately and there was nobody in the back seat. And she says, I was so shooken up, I could not drive the car. She just got out of the car and she stayed home and waited for me to come home from work. Now me hearing this, I didn't know if I was committing my wife or I didn't know what was gonna happen at this point in time, um, but um, we, 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 we talked about it, um, we prayed about it, and um, make a long story short, on, uh, on December 15th, um, I got a phone call, I was at work, and she said, listen, she said, um, you know, there's no commitment here, there's no commitment here, she says, there's a, there's a little boy that they're pulling, that was pulled out of a foster home that really needs a home for the holidays. She says, they're about to put him into, um, you know, a, a center. For the, for the holidays. And she said, can we at least just bring him home and give this kid a home for, for the holidays? And I said, you know, just absolutely. Um, so I drove home, I drove home that night and I pulled into the driveway and a car pulled into the driveway right behind me. And um, so uh, we, we pull up, I get out of the car, I walk over to the car and, uh, and I see it's um, a, a gentleman that uh, does social work and works um, with our church. So I knew kind of who it was, and I assumed obviously it was the child. I looked in the, he rose down the window, and there's a little African-American boy sitting in the back seat of the car, and he looks up um, and says, Daddy. It's like, okay. <laughs> I guess I just got my Lord's answer. Um, I guess he is speaking to me. Um, we, uh, our son Corey, um, stayed with us for a couple of weeks, and uh, and that was it. Um, he is he is. Uh, we adopted him about uh, ten months later. Um, he is absolutely the best thing that that ever happened to us. Um, he just you know you figure you, you, you take somebody like that. He, he had been in three homes um, prior to us. At two years old, we adopted him at two. Um, he had bounced around se several homes and. You know, you, you think about it, you think about, you know, it changed his life, to be quite honest. Um, he has absolutely changed ours. And uh, I thank the Lord. Um, a couple of years later, um, I had the opportunity to coach my son through the youth league. And it was, it was, it was, it was a joy to be able to give back you know, in the sport that was so, absolutely so wonderful to me. And, but, uh, but he was now at U15 and he was getting ready to go into the, to the school system and uh, that was it, it was, it was over. My, my coaching career was gonna end. I had that three year joy in my life of, of getting back into lacrosse. 
Um, and then I got a phone call um, from a parent who said, uh, oh my gosh, she says the, uh, the high school job has just opened up. You, you have to apply. And I, 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 I said, are you kidding me? He, says, he said, no. He says, you have to apply. So I, I said, I, I, I work. I can't coach at a high school. You know, I, I work all day. I don't get home five to six o'clock at night and, and all this good stuff. He said, but just, will you at least go talk to them? He said, I want to set up it. We'll go talk to them. And so I, I went and spoke to them. And, uh, you know, they said, what, what would you need to do this? And uh, I said to them, um, I obviously would need a night program. Um, I would, you know, they had lights, they had turf. I said, if, if we can do practices at night, if we can schedule games at night, if we can do all this stuff, I, I would be more than happy to do it. And they said, done deal. Um, so I not only had the, the three years there with my son in the youth league, um, I have been able to coach um, at the high school level and coach him through high school. And I'm still there coaching the high school and, uh, and, and blessed to have these kids come through the program and be able to be a part of, of their lives. Um, <coughs> on April 14th, 2011, um, I was coaching and uh, I received a phone call. And it was odd because I, uh, I, I always turn my phone off when I'm coaching him on the field. And, but it rang and I took the phone out of my pocket and said, you know what, um, let me answer, let me look in. You know, I was going to just turn it off and I noticed it was my brother. And uh, I knew it couldn't be good. Um, my brother knew I was coaching. He wouldn't be calling me in the middle of a game. Um, I walked down to the corner of the sidelines um, to find out my dad had just passed. It was um, fitting, so to speak, or ironic, that uh, I was involved with lacrosse when he died. Because for him, um, all through his life, it was about coming to see his son play. It was all about the sports. He told a million lacrosse stories from, from then on through life. It was, it was everything. And uh, I had a very close relationship with my dad. Um, but this was the first time this was the first time in my life that an event had taken place with a family member um, where I didn't challenge the Lord. Uh, I thanked them that I was blessed for the years I had with them. I thanked them for all he had done and uh, I knew he was going to be in a much better place than, 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 than we are right now. And I knew I'd have the opportunity uh, to see him, see him again. You know, I have, uh, and I'm going to wrap up now, I, I have, uh, for all that, I have one regret. Um, you know, when you watch, when you watch athletes today um, who, who have, have been introduced to the Lord, who have a relationship with the Lord, um, they do some wonderful things, or wonderful things happen to them. They have the opportunity to thank the Lord um, right then and there, whether it's a touchdown, whether it's a goal scored. Um, if I can look back, um, I just wish through that, all that success the Lord blessed me with in the game of lacrosse, that while I was playing, that I had that opportunity to thank him um, for everything he had done, not what I had done. And uh, I thank you for letting me speak to